Hi Collective, I hope you're well, I hope you've kept well, I hope the past week has been an exciting week, I don't know what you've been doing, but I hope you've been productive with your week in whatever you're doing. I'm uh, always excited to be sharing God's word with you again. Uh, my name is Miruka Gwada, one of the pastors here at Collective Worship, and it, as I always mention, it is a huge honor to be able to share God's word, to be able to speak with you what God is speaking to me in this season. And be able to, for lack of better words, go through, dig deep and think through what is God saying to us in scripture and what is God pushing us to do or challenging us to do in our lives. One thing that I'm always fascinated about is water. So the thing about water is that, one, it has zero calories. I am really about calories these days. And so I'm always amazed at how water has zero calories. But aside from it having zero, zero calories, it is one of the most essential things that we need. Water literally sustains quite a lot in our lives. We need water for energy, yet it has zero calories. We need water in various forms, either even in ice, to cool down systems. We need water in steam to heat up systems. Uh, we need water in its various forms, be it ice, be it water in itself, and be it steam or clouds, and or vapor, sorry. And vapor is seen in the sense of clouds wherever we are. Ice is seen in life with the, with the polar sides of the world where ice is quite a strong thing. Um, water is 70% um, covered coverage of the entire uh, globe. And so this water in its form comes in three distinct forms, which all three are totally different, but all three are the same at the same time. Water in its form is acts independently when you look at it, each form acts independently if you give it a task, but each form also can act differently um, or uniquely uh, towards each other. And the thing about this water as it is, is that I love it because it gives me a clear analogy of when we look at the Trinity of God. I love it because it's a clear and an interesting analogy when I think about the Trinity of God. And this brings me to the scripture of the day. My scripture or what I'm studying this week with you is a thing that we always pray, a thing that we always speak, a thing that we always share with each other, be it before a meal or after a meal, be it after a service or before a service. I usually say it in the form of a prayer. I am sure you know it. It comes from the book 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 14. Say it with me. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. That's what the scripture says. But we all know it. We can say it whether we are even saved or not because it's a, it's a word that people say it quite casually. And when I, was, when I was looking at this scripture, why I found it fascinating, I was like, why do we say it? What's the meaning of this prayer that we speak out? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Why do we say it? Is it just a loose word that we speak? And it made me read more. It made me research more. It made me think through it more. And I challenge you also, because this is such a heavy topic, such a big thing. What is this thing about the Trinity? What is this thing about who God is? Because we say that God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They are three in one, yet they are one. What is this thing all about? When I was thinking about it, or I was reading through it, I realized that, yes, they are all independent god the father god the son god the holy spirit they are all independent and they are all the same when i think about it they all have the same attributes they are god is love uh, god is compassionate um, when we speak about the holy spirit we speak about how he comes and covers a multitude of sins as we speak of the power of christ our lord jesus christ 
and we cannot negate it and say that ah god is god the father is powerful or stronger than god the son or god the holy spirit is another thing trinity speaks to us that they are all the same yeah they are all different at the same time think about water as i mentioned they are all the same yeah they are all different in whatever state that they are in and so reading through scripture what I was thinking through, why this I, I felt this was the best place to look through, was because there was history in Second Corinthians before Paul, uh, before Paul prayed this to the people of Corinth. If you read through the whole script of the whole uh, book, there was a lot of division, there was a lot of animosity, there was a lot of chaos that was happening in the church of Corinth. And as he is bidding them goodbye, he says. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. And I got interested as to, yes, he's spoken and given them solutions on their uni disunity and everything, but why is this a conclusion? Why do we speak this even in church as a benediction when we live? So, breaking it down, this scripture, one, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. When I see this and when I read this and I look through scripture on various spaces that we are we are taught about the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am reminded of the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 that says let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Why I'm encouraged about this and why I feel encouraged now when I speak by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is because I know that I can approach boldly, I can come boldly unto the throne of grace and I will find mercy. Now this grace, because I have been reconciled with God because Christ came and he died for me, this act or this selfless act that Christ came, bore my sins, died on the cross for me and rose a gate for me shows that I can approach his throne of grace boldly and know that when I approach this throne of grace I will find mercy and at any point that I am in need he will come through for me at any point that I have need I will find grace and now when I speak by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ I say it confidently knowing that the grace of our Lord in my time of need in my present state even when I'm lost and in despair, I know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ is there for me in whatever circumstance that I'm in. The second part says, and the love of God. The love of God is spoken widely and boldly in scripture. The love of God speaks in, in, in ways that we cannot dare think or imagine. The love of God is beyond our imagination and when I think of this I know that why I can approach the throne of grace and find help in times of need is because the love of God is always with me because God loves me he will never leave me nor forsake me because God loves me I can boldly approach his throne and so now when I pray by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God I know for sure I'm not praying it out of the blue but I know that this love of God will cover will walk with me will strengthen me when I need it this love of God will be my shield this love of God will be my anchor in whatever situation that I'm at and lastly it says and the communion of the Holy Spirit and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit brings us the Holy Spirit walks with us the Holy Spirit is within us in all that we do and because we are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit we know that the fruits of the Spirit are within us and so love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control is within me to know that whatever the circumstance that I'm in I am in fellowship with the Holy Spirit and so I don't say it casually or lightly but I say it with so much conviction knowing that the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in me gives me the fruit of the Spirit and gives me also the gifts of the Spirit and so I can walk confidently knowing one 
At the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, if I need it and my time of need is with me wherever I'm going. And the love of God that covers me and walks with me in everything that I do. And the love of God that strengthens me when I need him. And the love of God that is able to cover all, all my sins and show me the right way to go. Still also gives me the fellowship of the Holy Spirit in me and within me. To walk boldly, to walk with confidence, to walk knowing that I am not alone. In all that I do, in everything that I do. And so I'm encouraged. And it's an encouragement to us that this prayer that we pray, that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, when we say it to when I say it to myself, be with me now, or I say it to my fellow believer, be with you now, and forevermore, it is not in vain. God's grace through Jesus Christ has reconciled me and has brought me to the throne of grace. God's love is walking with me and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit working in me and within me is strengthening me for all tasks and all activities that I'm doing in life. And so pray it with strength. Pray it with conviction. Encourage yourself. When you're praying it with somebody, when you're praying it over somebody, do it with so much love, do it with so much strength, knowing that you are speaking of this trinity of God, which is, though they may be independent, they are all still the same. Think of water. Though they may be different, though they may be serving different factions, they are all the same. Same as our Lord and our God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so as we conclude, I will conclude with this prayer. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with me and with you, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.